If data is missing from your Google Analytics 4 reports, it could be data sampling or a threshold being applied. In this video, I'm going to show you how to reduce sampling and remove thresholds in GA4 so you have accurate data. First up, data sampling. Data sampling can occur when an exploration report includes a lot of data. For example, if you select a long date range, or if you have a website that receives a lot of traffic. In these cases, Google Analytics will use a portion of your data to then create the report. So it might use, say, a third of the data to then calculate the metrics presented in the report. The report isn't created using all of the data that has been collected. And data can be sampled when you create exploration reports in Google Analytics 4. Let's take a look. I've already logged into Google's demo property, so let's select Explore and we're going to open a report I've already created. Have you created exploration reports in Google Analytics? And if you have, what's your go-to exploration report? Let me know in the comments. I'm going to open this source medium report I created. This report includes the session source medium dimension, along with active users, sessions, engaged sessions, and bounce rate and I've also selected a longer date range for the report. This means we're trying to include a lot of data in the report. If we look at the top right corner, we can see there is an alert. If we click this, we can see at the top that the report is being sampled. It's also telling us that the report has been created based on around 30% of available data. We can also see it's telling us that a threshold is being applied. I'll cover thresholds in a moment. The easiest way to remove data sampling is to reduce the date range for our report. This means we're asking Google Analytics to use less data to create our report. So let's change the date range so it's for three months. Let's select May, June and July as the date range. Our report updates. We're still seeing the alert, but this time when we select it, we can see our report is no longer being sampled. The report has been created using 100% of the available data. Just remember the best way to remove sampling is to reduce the date range. Apart from reducing the date range, you can also switch to the standard reports. This is because the standard reports in Google Analytics 4 won't include sample data. These reports use pre-processed data, so Google Analytics isn't having to use raw data to create the reports. How often do you see data sampling in your exploration reports? Let me know in the comments. This brings us to data thresholds. Google says that a threshold can be applied if data could be used to figure out the identity of people visiting your website. So thresholds remove data from your reports. Let's head back to Google Analytics to take a look. We're still looking at the source medium exploration report. And if we select the alert again, we can see a threshold is being applied to the report. This means some data has been removed. Google says data thresholds are applied to prevent anyone viewing a report or exploration from inferring the identity of individual users based on demographics, interests, or other signals present in the data. So it's designed to keep information about individual audience members private. But it can be frustrating if you want to view all of the available data. Thresholds are automatically applied, so you can't remove them but there are four things that can increase the likelihood of them being applied. If you've enabled Google Signals, if the reporting identity is set to blended or observed, if you've selected a narrow date range, or the report includes search query information. If any of these occur and you have a small number of users, then a data threshold can be applied to the report. If you want to remove data thresholds, there are a few options. Let's start by navigating to Reports.
we're looking at the report snapshot. And in Google's demo property, we can see an alert for the first card. Selecting this tells us that a threshold is being applied. If you see this in your account, then the first thing to try is extending the date range. So let's select the current date range. And let's extend this. And then click Apply. The report updates, but the threshold is still being applied. So in Google's demo property, that didn't work. Google's demo property seems to have special thresholds applied. My guess is that Google is manually setting limits so that personal information isn't included in their demo property. So let's switch to my demo property. Then user attributes. And demographic details. Reports that include demographics are the most likely to have a threshold applied. And there are three dimensions in particular that this applies to. Let's select the default dimension. The three dimensions at the bottom of this list, so age, gender and interests, are only available when you enable Google Signals. And these are the dimensions that are most likely to lead to a threshold being applied. Let's select age we can see that the report is empty, and at the top there is an alert. When we select this, we can see a threshold is being applied to the report. So let's try extending the date range. Let's select the last 12 months. The report updates, and we can see data presented. However, a threshold is still being applied. This brings us to the next option, which is to change the reporting identity. To do this, we navigate to Admin. Then select Reporting Identity in the Property column. And let's click Show All. The reporting identity lets you control how Google Analytics identifies users across multiple sessions. The default is blended, and if we select this, we can see it uses a combination of user ID, Google Signals, device ID, and model data. If you would like to learn more about each of these options, then I've included a link in the extra resources below this video. But overall, user ID is where you pass your own custom identifier to Google Analytics. Google Signals uses anonymous information from people logged into their Google account. Device ID is the identifier automatically created by the Google Analytics tag. And modeling uses machine learning to fill gaps in data when you have a cookie consent banner configured for Google Analytics. Google Analytics will use the first available method from this list to report on your users. Both the blended and observed reporting identity include Google Signals as one of the options. And this is the main cause of thresholds being applied. So you can try switching to the last option, which is the device-based reporting identity. This only uses the device ID for reporting users. The good thing about using this option is that it doesn't modify any of the data that's collected or processed into your reports. However, this option doesn't consider any custom user IDs you're collecting. So if you're using this feature, then you're out of luck. And I want to highlight you can switch the reporting identity for your property at any time without impacting your data. So you can switch this whenever you like. If this option doesn't work, then you also have the option of disabling Google Signals. You can do this by selecting Data Settings and then Data Collection in the Property column. Google Signals is at the top. The important thing to highlight here is that disabling Google Signals will mean that you can't use audiences from Google Analytics in your linked Google Ads account. And it will also mean that age, gender and interests aren't available in your reports. So I would only disable this as a last resort. If you turn Google Signals off, 
This does mean the data from this feature won't be collected. There is no undo, so please proceed with caution. Let's turn it off. This means we won't be collecting the age, gender or interests dimensions when Google Signals is disabled. And remember, it also means you won't be able to create remarketing campaigns in Google Ads using your Google Analytics audience lists. Apart from sampling and thresholds, there's even more to learn about GA4. So please take a moment to subscribe to this channel to learn everything else you can do with Google Analytics. You'll learn how to collect actionable data to improve your website and campaigns. Learning Google Analytics with Love's Data will take your business to the next level. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.